Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Happy Earth Science Week to everybody. So we're Friday at the end of the week. I don't know about all of you, but I'm pretty, um, it's been a big week. I'm feeling pretty tired. So I thought, you know, let's round off on a positive and just have a fun, short uh, presentation about, you know, NT geology, how good it is, and then some of the amazing initiatives that's, that are being undertaken by our division. So I also want to uh, provide an acknowledgement to country and echo everything that Drew said. I'm also up here on the beautiful Larrakia country um, and want to pay my respects for to elders past, present and emerging across the entire NT division, where we work, where we play, where we explore. And I've, I've put this photo here. I went to Kakadu National Park a few school holidays ago. And you can see here, you know, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are the first earth scientists. They understood the landscapes. They understood how to use the tools. They did amazing rock art and rock paintings. And this particular image is of um, what's thought to be first contact. So it's quite a powerful site to go and, vis and visit and also beautiful geology as well. So a very quick outline. We're going to do a whip around the territory, uh, talk about the geological highlights, and then I'd be very keen to know what, what your geological highlight is. Talk about who we are as a division, some of our um, amazing initiatives, and then where to next, because everything we do, it's for our members, and we can only um, get better if we understand what you'd like to have um, from us. So it doesn't really matter, I think, whether you're a geologist, a geographer, a hobbyist, or even a tourist. Um, we know that across the Northern Territory, we're defined by some pretty amazing and pretty beautiful uh, geology and landscapes. And I don't know if you saw this one on socials, but we have our uh, Deputy Chief Minister, the Minister for Mines, and also the Minister for Tourism, sharing this um, pretty funny uh, dad joke, but it's also highlighting the fact that we do have, you know, these gorgeous uh, landscapes and rocks around the Territory, and that's really, you know, an opportunity for geotourism as well as geology. I mean, I don't know about all of you online, but I definitely moved up here for the geology. So let's go through it. Um, not going to be technical at all. Uh, it's a hard afternoon, but let's start off with the most iconic, right? Uluru, 550-ish million year arcos. You can see here the beautiful folds, uh, beautiful layers. Katajuta, uh, right around the corner, um, as a sedimentary geologist, I personally find hiking Katajuta is much more exciting because of the conglomerates and looking at all the different um, uh, geology and inclusions within that. Up slightly north to Kings Canyon. So here we're in the Marini sandstone, 400 million years old. What I really love about Kings Canyon is that it gives you that perspective, whether you're up here at the top looking at those wave ripples it is such a way to have the public to understand yes those were those were ripples we can see the geology in this particular um landscape as well you can really see you know how extensive and amazing this geology is and as a petroleum geologist definitely what a reservoir <laughs> what a reservoir the marine is So Lara Pinta, you could absolutely write a book on this iconic region of Central Australia in the West Max. Um, it's a 230 kilometre trail with a diverse range of geology. You know, we've got schists, stroms, sandstones, granites, wide ranging from Quaternary to Paleoproterozoic to such an iconic place um, but what I think is really cool about the Lara Pinta Trail is that you can explore it in town in Alice Springs 
as well as, you know, doing the whole trek. So you don't need to be an ultra marathon, super fit person to go and appreciate the landscapes on the trail. Um, Kalu Kalu, which is literally translated to the round boulders. Um, this is the devil's marble um, granite, which is thought to be intruded at least uh, 1.7 billion years old and then eroded to these iconic features that we see all across the world. Nitmaluk, which was the... Um, the pun of the Deputy Chief Minister, also known as Catherine Gorge. So this is um, a 13, 13 gorges, paleoproterozoic age. Um, it's You can go on a boat, have a look at the amazing sandstones of the Red Bank package, and you can also see some fantastic Aboriginal artworks. And at NTGS, we recently published an excursion guide um, to this region if you're interested in learning more. Litchfield's right around the corner. Um, love to take our kids out there. Again, similar paleoproterozoic uh, rocks of the Tolma group um, that you can see in this image. And what's really cool is there's a lot of, um, you're quite close to the Pine Creek region, so you can stop along the highway, have a look at the beautiful pegnomatites. My children were out there picking up tourmaline crystals. Uh, it's such a fantastic and accessible location. And last but not least, on my um, whirlwind tour of the top end of the Northern Territory, we have Kakadu National Park. So similarly aged are Paleoproterozoic rocks, um, a range of different things up here, sandstones, conglomerates, um, fantastic artworks, amazing landscapes. So definitely keen to find out who your winner is. And um, I thought... You know, maybe not in this presentation right now, but, you know, potentially in the future at one of our dinner events, how about we do a best of the best and, you know, try to vote and see who will be our, our geological mascot for the year and we use it on our publication materials. Uh, so now to the series. Um, so this is kind of the things we do as a, GSA NT division. It's not all just looking at rocks and landscapes. We are quite, we have something for everybody. We've got the technical seminar series. You might have light hearted series like I'm doing today, but you know, we are basically a group of people who aim to promote and advance earth sciences, no matter who you are and what um, you do. So up here in the NT division, we're all about community. We're quite isolated group of people. We want to meet for monthly seminars and geopub events. And what's pretty cool is we do these both in Alice Springs as well as Darwin. So we meet online for a technical seminar such as this, but then we'll go out um, either Alice Springs group or the Darwin group and have that social networking um, afterwards as well. We do host our annual dinner, which is our really big uh, event of the year, where we have uh, most of the NT geological survey up in Darwin, flying in a range of geologists, uh, our collaborators, and invite all our industry partners and friends. And that's our big bash that we have uh, quite early in the year. We've also started our annual fundraising calendar and much more. So definitely, um, we hear quite constantly that we want to have more field trips in the GSA and we can absolutely make this happen um, now that we've figured out our paperwork and, and how to do that with insurance. So if you've got any ideas of where you think we should be going, let me know and we'll try to make that happen. So meet our amazing committee. Uh, definitely everything we do is a team effort and I always want to thank so much all our amazing volunteers. Uh, little bits together, lots of hands make for light work. So Joe, our amazing treasurer who definitely makes our um, annual dinner happen. Kate who organises these seminar series and Glenn, Pablo, Tim, Lachlan, Chris and Annette as our general committee members always helping for a range of different initiatives. 
And if you have time or you have an idea, even want to give one day a week, um, we would be really grateful for you to join our amazing committee. So what did we do this year? Um, as I said, our annual dinner is always the highlight of what we do as a society. Just a few, I didn't have very many photos from this year, um, which I guess kind of tells you that this was an amazing, <laughs> amazing and busy dinner. But I also had a broken foot and didn't know that at the time. So I'm pretty, um, now I know that I'm pretty impressed that I, that I got around and had a really good night. Very important part of our annual dinner, though, is the recognition of our members and the GSA milestones. So we wanted to give a big congratulations to Ian Scrimjaw, who has his 15-year um, milestone. He's been a member of our society for 15 years. But also Christine Edgoose, who had her 40-year milestone. That's absolutely incredible. And I think for most of that time, Chris has been on executive committees and volunteering. So, you know, again, we, we thanked you so much at the time. And I want to extend that thanks again, Chris, to all the work you've done for NT Geology. <laughs> uh, and also we had Stephen Tinkle, who also had his 40-year um, milestone come up this year. Stephen was unable to attend our dinner. I think he had COVID at the time, but I met up with him afterwards and shouted him a lovely lunch. So he's here on the bottom corner. Last year, we also trialled our uh, first fundraising calendar and uh, it was a little bit of a labour of love. It was, um, we learnt a lot through this pro um, project and hope to come back bigger and stronger going forward. But I think what we did do eventually was to deliver a fantastic calendar that highlighted photos from our members and friends. So these are all amateur uh, photos that have been donated to us at the GSA. We sold this calendar and used it to fundraise for our first GSA publication. And we did sell out of these calendars. So I think that highlights, um, you know, that it was a success and that we're going to um, continue with this fundraising and calendar each year. So here is the book. This is our first um, GSA and T publication. We're quite proud. You know, Annette came to us um, with a completed draft. She uh, wanted help to publish this book and the GSA NT maybe naively took it on and decided that we would help her um, publish this amazing work. And so I've got I've got my version um, here. So it's it's basically a um, field guide. So it's quite light. It's ring bound. You can open it all the way, but it's a guide to the Larapinta Trail. So I hope you can see it's got maps, stopping points all across the way, 60 stops, some in town, some, you know, across the entire trail. So it is quite a big body of work, but impressively it's written for anybody. Um, it's got a big glossary at the back. So anybody can pick it up and have a look at what you're seeing. And it also has a lot of a photograph so you can find where you are and go, oh, that rock, that's a granite. Let's look at these feldspars. It's quite um it's quite in depth and I'm very, very proud of Annette um for her publication. We then um in Earth Science Week, so that was two months ago, had the opportunity to launch the book. And we wanted to make this an event. It wasn't just a book launch on Science Week. It was more of a, um, a science share with the community. So we invited all our friends from Inspired NT, Megafauna Central, Volcano um, Stamp Lovers, which is Glenn, um, one of our amazing members, and the Alice Springs Field Nats. And we all came together to kind of showcase Alice Springs Geology, Alice Springs STEM, um, and just appreciating, you know, the science that's all around us. And it was quite a successful event. I think we had about 70 uh, people attend, over 200 people registered to attend. Uh, it was completely free. And then uh, at the end of our kind of presentation, 
we went out and had a look at the Alice Springs granite. So it was really fun to get people from the public to go out, have a look, um, have a look at the different rocks and minerals and try to identify those for themselves. And I think another really important thing that came out of that meeting um, was we invited all of our sponsors to come up and share why they supported the book. And it became really apparent that for some people, it wasn't just a tourism or field guide. They actually saw it as a really important education tool that they'd be able to use, for example, in primary or high schools as a, as a field excursion guide where they'd be actually teaching and trying to link it to curriculum. And I thought that's um, incredibly interesting an angle that we hadn't thought about before and something I think we need to um, consider as a group potentially with our friends in the education and outreach specialist group and explore that further because we do have this amazing resource that we should be promoting um, as best we can. Another really amazing thing that came out of this book was, you know, this is the first thing that we're selling um, at cost. And Annette has beautifully donated all the profits that come from this book into a new bursary. And I've put it in inverted co um, commas, the education and outreach bursary. We don't yet have the exact terms of reference. So this name might change, but I'm so excited about this. It really is a game changer for us in the NT division. We don't have a large budget or a large uh, membership base. Uh, so this is going to be one of the new ways where we can start um, earning revenue and then turning that into future books or future products um, and other amazing initiatives. So thank you um, to Annette for that generosity, as well as the GSA, um, NT, all our committee who are going to be managing that going forward. And now where next? So I did say that we will have um, a new annual calendar and this is the kind of draft cover. Um, stay tuned. I think we're going to have this out in the next week or so. Um, coming up quite soon, not 100% affiliated with GSANT, but the Museum of the Northern Territory have got a field excursion out to our great unconformity or <laughs> the greatest unconformity um, just behind the museum. So I haven't actually been to this exact field location before, but I have heard there's a lot of fossils. So I think it's going to be um, quite an exciting morning out probably pretty warm, so bring a water bottle if you want to come. Um, Annette and the geotourism team are also heavily focused in the Stanley Chasm region. So this is in Central Australia. The location is actually um, Aboriginal owned and they do their own tour um, guide through the chasm. And what's quite exciting is that they're willing to collaborate with the GSA to add an extra dimension to their tour. So uh, what we're doing is providing them with um, geological information and then we're going to work together to put that into a format that they would feel comfortable in sharing with. So this is going to take a lot of work, I feel. Um, I think we'd probably be launching that towards the end of 2024 because we do want to take the time to get it right but I think it's quite exciting and we've come a long way in this uh, Stanley Chasm project that I feel like we can at least um, share that we're starting this journey and then I guess finally um, we want your feedback what what do you want of us in 2024 we're going to start planning quite soon um, we know paperwork out to field trips can take some time. So if you want to go somewhere uh, in the dry, let me know and let's make it happen. And that's me. Thank you.